Yeah, welcome. And my name is Jakob Gottlieb Svensson. I come from the company CT Global. And um, I'm a principal consultant and lead developer. Today I'm going to show you how I made an Azure connected greenhouse in less than $100. The prototype was not $100, but. Oh, sorry. Slow there. Yep, so this is me. <laughs> And um, I've been there in, in uh, been here in CT Global for over t 12 years as an automation consultant. So I've done a lot of different automations, integrating whatever system you could imagine. So I started actually integrating stuff that isn't computers just to, to, to be entertained. So this is a little hobby project at home, which sometimes in periods my wife wasn't so happy about because I came to, to bed too late, of course. It's like, oh, it's 4 a.m. again. Oh, sorry. Anyway, two hours of sleep, and then the, the daughter wakes up, and then everything is good again. Um, this is, yeah. So, what do you need? So, as I promised, we can make this under a hundred dollars. You need a greenhouse. That's not included in a hundred dollars. <laughs> Otherwise, it's really not a good greenhouse. Um, you need Wi-Fi in the greenhouse or network. It has a network connection too. I have Wi-Fi in my shed which extends my Wi-Fi from the living room, which then goes to the greenhouse. You need a Raspberry Pi. Actually, in the beginning, I tried to make this on a, an a Arduino, so we could say make it in less than $10 maybe, but that is very difficult. Um, and the cool thing about, as you'll see, Raspberry Pi is that I can actually run PowerShell directly here. So using the Arduino, I spend hours and hours and hours then I, my friend gave me a Raspberry Pi, and I was like, okay, let's try that. And it took me around two hours, and then I had the basic system running, stabilized, and everything. The problem with Arduino was that after a week or so, it would crash. Um, this one doesn't crash. It has never crashed, um, except when the power outage, of course, <laughs> and the Wi-Fi outage. But this was not that its fault, right? So a standard Raspberry Pi um, that we are using here. So why did I try to make it in Arduino? Well, mostly because when you start a game, right, you don't select beginner level. You select, it's like because you think, I'm a geek, you know, I select expert from the beginning. But then it becomes too hard, and then you go to beginner level again. Um, right? That's how it works. So we need some sensors. There's a basic sensor here. Cost around $1 or $5 at least. Um, Relay module, that's a little module here that can turn on uh, power, so power to the motors, pumps, because the next thing is we need some pumps. They are about $5 each, um, so about $20 in total. I only have three with me, but I have a fourth one at home. And you need my code to do this. So on the GitHub, uh, on my GitHub, you will see that everything here is actually driven directly from my GitHub. You'll see that in a demo in a second. So, what do we want to send? We want to send temperature. That's what the, that sensor does. We want to send humidity. That's also that sensor. And then I wanted to add some more stuff, but unfortunately, I soldered the stuff wrong a few weeks ago. So it's not in there yet, but it's confirmed on the roadmap that soon we're going to have soil moisture so that we can actually measure the, the moisture of the soil and then whenever something is too dry, we, uh, we turn on the motor, the pump, which then waters the plant, right? That's the whole idea. You could turn on light if you want that. And you could add heat maybe too. Uh, oh, that's not a metrics, but yeah, you could watch light, of course. So you could watch where... How, how the temperature and humidity acts against the light on your shed, uh, on, your, on your greenhouse, and check if it's positioned in the right place in your garden. All right, so an overview. We have a greenhouse. I, didn't, I couldn't find an icon for a real greenhouse, so I found a house and made it green. This is a greenhouse, right? <laughs> Nobody can argue with that. Um, we want to send the metrics somewhere. So a good place to send metrics of any kind is log analytics in Azure. Because we can add lots of data in here, it can stay there for up to, uh, to two years by default, and I know you can extend that to even more if you call and ask Microsoft politely. Um, so we want to send it there. 
we want to have this uh, greenhouse controlled by something. I want to be able to turn these on whenever I want to. I don't want something really complex about me trying to co connect to this machine and then trying to turn on the motor directly. No, I want this greenhouse, the new machine, to get its configuration in an interval, like every 30 seconds. And if it's been changed, then it turns on the pump. So how should we control that? There's many options in Azure and in Office 365, and I turn to SharePoint. If you've seen my other demo with the Lego robot, you'll see that this is one of my favorite places to, to set uh, configurations or to, to order stuff. It's super simple to add that. So these are the two main actors. But instead of connecting from this little machine directly to SharePoint, directly to Log Analytics, I wanted the code on the machine to be as simple as possible. So I made an Azure function which accepts very simple calls from my, my greenhouse. And then in the Azure function, it has all the code that knows how to talk to log analytics, that knows how to get the stuff from SharePoint. Then when we want to control the actual thing, we can do it, we can make on, from the SharePoint list the Power App, so I can control it from my phone, which is quite nice when you're in a greenhouse. You usually don't bring your laptop to your greenhouse, right? Well, I did a few times and it almost broke right? when it, t it falls to the ground, whatever. Sorry, I need a new laptop. Um, <laughs> we want to see these locks. The locks are here, but where can we see them? Where can we easily see them? Well, we can easily make a dashboard or a workbook, as it's called in Azure, that can show these metrics. We can also use Power BI to show it, if you really want to show it in a, uh, in a nice way that you can share with, with non-IT people. Power BI is a nice place to do that. So for myself, I can watch here, but if I want to share it to the, throughout the organization, I would do it with Power BI. I mean, my wife doesn't probably care, so I don't share it to the organization at home. Uh, anyway, so I just look in the puzzle. Right. So why do I do it like this? Well, we want to automate stuff at some point. We want to turn on the water, water pumps whenever we want to, uh, yeah, whenever we want to, to, um, to, to water the plants. I started with water valves and then, you know, uh, direct uh, water in there with full pressure and it's like 500 liters an hour. So if it doesn't turn off the valve again, you can imagine that it wasn't a nice uh, um, scene. So I decided it was too difficult it was too much to have valves for my little bit of greenhouse, so I turned them into motors instead, which are these ones here, where we can put some, mo uh, and, and they ha it has the, the hoses here, down to some, some rainwater that it, that it sucks in and pumps out into the, to the plant. What could we add to this? Well, open the windows, ventilation would be a good idea. Light, if you wanna uh, do green, <laughs> your greens at night, not so good for the environment. Same with heat. If you want to do tomatoes in the winter in Denmark outside, you should not do that because it's a waste of energy. But you could do that. So let's see how this works. So first of all, I've simply started this. It's connected to the internet with a standard Wi-Fi through my phone, actually. If I go to the, uh, the portal here, you'll see that I already in the front page of my portal has this greenhouse um, dashboard so I can quickly open my phone for instance and see what are the status in the greenhouse and you see when I turned it on an hour ago it was 20 degrees in here and now it's almost 24 degrees because we are some people in the room and funny thing is when when the heat goes up the humidity goes down it's always like that so when we reach you know evening in Denmark, when it gets dark and the temperature really falls, the humidity actually goes up to 100% every day. And when we talk October, winter time, it's always 100%. So this is quite funny. You can actually see what has happened the last hour as it's been running. And here we have prepared for the, for the soil moisture sensors. But in log analytics, you can save things for up to two years. Of course, I saved my data for my greenhouse every 30 seconds it measures and it sends it and I save it for two years. So this is for example I can go in to uh, log analytics I can make a query we don't want to go 
details on that, but it's not that difficult. You make a query, you ask it to output something, and this is an example of September in, um, yeah, in my greenhouse when it was still running in the actual greenhouse. Um, and you see it goes up and down every day. See, even when it was cold in Denmark, it's almost 40 degrees or 35 degrees in the, in, in the greenhouse. And you, in the summer, it goes up to like 50 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty uh, hot in there sometimes. But this means we can save this. And how much does it cost? I mean, I sent little piece of numbers every 30 seconds. I saved them for two years. I think it's about half a dollar a month or something I pay for the data. So it's nothing. Of course, if you send gigabytes and gigabytes, it can become uh, a higher price, but there's lots and lots of scenarios where you can send all the data you want in there and, and not pay that much for it. Um, yes. So looking back at this, we should actually go and connect to the greenhouse. So if I go and open this um, and the greenhouse here, you can, so you can see it, here you go. So I can log in as pi, my password. And here we have my Raspberry Pi. And if I go and run the command called screen, which, which opens what I have opened already, you'll see that this is actually the greenhouse running. And we'll see that um, we have val uh, valves here, they're all off. It gets its configuration. You can see the version here, 4.2. Um, and again, it wrote again here, there was some information about the temperature that it sent. And so on, it just goes in an infinite loop like this. And we can see how long it has been running down here because you might want to reboot it sometimes, but I'll get back to that. So if I go to SharePoint, um, which is right here, and I go to my greenhouse SharePoint. I made a SharePoint for the greenhouse, of course. Um, go to houses, and what you'll see here is that I have a simple list that has the name of the uh, actual computer. This is the computer name when I run it as demo, and when I put it in my greenhouse, I change the computer name to this so that I have two different uh, stat statistics so that I can actually show and I keep my real data from my demo data. So, but I could have thousands of these. They could easily handle lots and lots of these if I had a lot of <laughs> plants or greenhouses. But I can change this valve, and this goes in every 30 seconds, as I say, sends it name and says, give me my configuration, and then uh, the function returns back, how should it start? But as I said, I created a power app here. Super simple power app. That means I can actually do it on my phone here. I just need to reconnect it. Otherwise, I'll just. So these power apps, actually, as I said, all you do is you cre click create app here. It creates an app. The, what takes long, the longest time in creating a power app is that it takes around 30 seconds to save it when you click save because it's, it's simply auto-generated. So it's super simple to turn your list here into a, an app. When I did this at, at Ignite, after Ignite came a guy who said, yeah, I do have a, a thousand greenhouses. Uh, and we do, we do look for systems like this, but none of the systems today actually has a nice cell phone app. You always need to bring the laptop. And when you're going around greenhouses all day, walking around with a laptop versus walking around with your phone. Everybody knows that that's probably better if you could do it on the phone. So let's do it on the phone here. Go there, select my account. Of course, it has locked itself out for once, um, which it does sometimes. You know, when it has been also locked in for a month, it, it asks you for to log in again. Usually it would just open, super simple. You go here, this is from the old demo, so I go back. See, you can't touch anything on the cell phone at all. There we go. This is not what usually would happen. Here you go. So you have all your power apps in here for your different administration of what you need. 
and if I go to greenhouse I go here and then I open the greenhouse app I select the house I want to control which is the dev house and I change this to um, let's just show this meanwhile just a sec like that I change valve 1 to on and as soon as I save this it's it's changed on SharePoint and when this does it next run in around 30 seconds of course it just finished it it'll go and read it and one of the motors should start this one turns on the motor starts you go get the configuration and motor starts it always works what doesn't work is right now it doesn't turn itself off so if you forget which I heard a friend that did a few times uh, then your wife gets a little angry that you don't get any tomatoes that year because you you kind of put, give them too much water right so we want to automate some of this stuff first of all what I found found interesting by doing this thing was how do we control the actual configuration of this device if you have a thousand of the devices how do you control a thousand devices you do that by having it auto configure itself when it boots so this is why I mentioned earlier that if you want to reboot every day for to check for new configurations that could be an idea to do so we have the Raspberry Pi right there on Raspberry Pi it's running the standard OS that comes with Raspberry Pi and only thing I've done is installed docker on the thing because why because then I can make what's called a container so whenever this thing boots up it starts a little script that actually goes and downloads the docker file from github so if, you sh if I switch to my little editor here you see that docker file no wait it will we'll show it here too if we go to my github here we go it's called ps greenhouse and let's zoom in a little bit right here is my github and this one is what's called the docker file I changed it 24 minutes ago but I'll change it in in the demo in a second again so what happens is the the rope uh, the um, the Raspberry boots up, it starts a docker command, but instead of reading this file from the local uh, disk, it simply starts a docker command with an address to this thing on GitHub. So it downloads its configuration, makes a container for it. This docker file describes what to put in that container, how to configure it. First thing it does is to download an OS image uh, from Docker Hub. It's Ubuntu, it doesn't really matter what we are running here. It downloads its OS image, then it needs to install PowerShell, so it goes to the GitHub for PowerShell and downloads PowerShell from there, installs it here. Then it goes to my GitHub and gets its script, and then it's actually ready. So if I change anything in the Docker file or the script, it's going to go, and I reboot it, it's going to be updated straight away. So let's try that. This is my Docker file, and it's a pretty special little way to write it that doesn't really matter right now but what you'll see is for example here it says greenhouse version 431 and if I scroll up here it says what PowerShell version uh, I'm running so if I want to update my script I could make a new version of my script but let's do something a little bit more cool let's both change PowerShell version and also the script so instead of running PowerShell 7 preview 6 which is the newest we're gonna roll back to preview 5 so whenever docker starts it reads this file and if there's any changes in the values for this it's gonna remake that part if there's no changes it's simply gonna use the same as last time so if it has had read this file and it still said six nothing had happened and it said it's the same as before i just used the same as i did before but as soon as i change something it's gonna re-download everything update everything so let's also change the actual script so we go here to the script which is a fairly simple PowerShell script. Um, in top of this script, we have version number here. Let's call it 4.4.4. .4 I'll update the file name to .4. And inside the Docker file, I'll reference version number 4 instead. You'll see that what it actually does, it downloads this greenhouse script, which comes from 
somewhere, uh, somewhere, my GitHub, but using the version I wrote. So when I write 0.4.4, it's going to get the file called 0.4.4. And then it's going to start the greenhouse. So next thing is a little bit tricky because I need to, I want to reboot this and I want to show to you as quickly as possible uh, to reconnect to it. So I'm going to get disconnected when I reboot in a second. First thing I want to do, I want to check this into GitHub. I'm going to make sure my files are saved like that. And you see I've changed this file, I've changed the Docker file, I've removed the 4.3 uh, and we call it 0.4.4. Yep. And we go and upload that to GitHub. So this is the way developers and scripters uh, always work. Um, at least they should by using GitHub or Azure DevOps and put the stuff in there. So this is standard stuff for a guy like me. Um, we update here and you see now it's just been updated 20 seconds ago. I look at the file here and we can see that preview file, what I wrote. I'll check this raw link because this is the link that it actually uses. And you can see here that it's number five. And it's if you down, go here, it says 4.4.4. .4 .4. So it should download the new version of the script. So I go to my machine here and then I say sudo reboot to reboot it. And then I'm going to try and connect as quickly as possible. Um, just wait a little bit uh, for it to restart and then it should be on its way. And what we should be able to see now is when I get in, we should be able to see that it actually is doing this update that I talked about, and it's downloading the file that we need, and so on. But I just need to catch it. There we go. Make sure you can see it here. Into this one. Okay. So if I go screen, dr. You see now it's actually booting. It says it's running these things. It's getting, right now it's getting PowerShell version five, right? So it's downloading something uh, and it takes, you know, a minute or half a minute and it's gonna install everything and update everything. Um, so I can actually control everything on that one by changing this file. So instead of me having to remote control it and, you know, uh, do all this nitty gritty uh, manage, micro management of all these small machines. I can put a single file up there and have a thousand machines use that file. The only thing that's different from the machine to another machine is the actual computer name so that we can separate them in the actual metrics. But they could easily use the same file as many as you want. I, I would like to try a thousand, that would be great. <laughs> but I'll have, have to ask my boss if we can buy a thousand Raspberry Pis. Or if anybody wants. Um, let's see, as you can see, it's actually configuring itself. The thing about Docker is, personally, I haven't been super, I haven't really seen the light for a long time. But when, I, when you make stuff like this, where you can actually go to a remote place to get its configuration, configure itself, it's super useful. Think about, for example, a kiosk machine in your lobby or uh, a, a, some machine that hangs on the wall shows something. S machines that you don't want to manage uh, manually. You could actually make that like this. This is not an error. This is just because in Linux they write progress messages to the error out. So it's red. But you see it downloads all these files that it needs for, for, for uh, actually setting up the greenhouse. And it should be done in, in around a second, uh, 30 seconds or so. Unpacks all the files. This is actually PowerShell that it downloaded and, and unpacked. Um, and, and soon it's going to uh, show that it starts my script. And then we should be able to see that it's, um, that it's running the new version. So I'll go to get back to it in a second so that we don't waste too much time on waiting because of course what I wanted to do in the beginning was to schedule uh, watering the plants because I don't want to turn it on at least I don't want to turn it off so the first thing I made was something that would automatically turn it off when I forgot to 
But you see, here is the plant. It couldn't fit in the greenhouse, but it's right here. Um, and we can actually using what's called a schedule in Azure Automation. We can go and actually set up. Okay, you should turn on the motors, uh, the pumps at 5 a.m. and at 5:30, you should turn them off again. But I don't need to make any complex automation here that connects to my greenhouse. All I need to use is standard modules that you can get from from a community or from Microsoft, and go to SharePoint and change this one value as you see me saw me do uh, before, and then it goes with the config down to the greenhouse, and then the actual plant grows. Right? Again, beautiful uh, and <laughs> animation. Right? Um, so let's go back and see the status here. Yes, it's still downloading. Depends on, of course, the internet speed and stuff, and it currently it's running on my cell phone, so it takes a little longer, but that doesn't really matter. Because what we can do with, we both have metrics and automation. When we get, when I get the soil moisture sensor, or if I figure, if I'm really clever, I could probably calculate how much I should water depending on how hot it is. It's in the middle of summer, it should have more, and what's the average temperature for yesterday, therefore I need to give so much water next day, something like that. So using the log analytics, we can easily use Azure Monitor to create an alert, like we do with IT systems. So we go and have the alert called automation. Uh, and automation triggers the SharePoint as before, goes down to Azure Function, well, config comes in and the plant grows, right? So this shows that by putting stuff in log analytics, having stuff automated by Azure Automation, we can actually do any kind of automation that can control anything that you would think of. And sorry, it's a little slow today, but it's still working on it. So it's, there's no issues there. So other uses, other uses, swimming pool automation, right? My colleague came to me and said, Hey, you're doing this greenhouse stuff. I'm going to make a automation for my pool that can uh, rinse the water whenever it gets too dirty. It should do it every day and depending on the temperature something should happen. And I said, use this, it's amazing. But then he found some prefabricated one and used that. Boring, right? <laughs> Very boring. Yeah. There's a ton of other uses, right? So you have any ideas because I really couldn't come up with more ideas of what to use it for, but I know there's a ton of uses out there. <laughs> Anyway, I'm talking about this thing because when you talk about the uses for the automation it triggering on, on log analytics and so on, well, there's an infinite amount of uses for that. Let's do a little check here before I have the last slide. You see now it's unpacking the stuff, so it finally downloaded the stuff via my, um, my cell phone. Um, so it's unpacking my little package of extra files that I would need for all the sensors and stuff. And all of this is, of course, e easy to use because, because I spent time making it. <laughs> so you can use it and get it from my, my GitHub. Um, yeah, but as you can see, everything is from scratch. Now it downloads, no, no, sorry, here we go. We download the new version of our script. And then it says entry point PowerShell. So it starts PowerShell now. Successfully running this little container. So it start, it, it's about to start PowerShell, which is this one here, um, which then goes and show that we are running the new version. At least if it works on this version of PowerShell, I haven't actually tested that before. But that's the fun thing about doing live demos. Here we go. Now it starts version 4.4, and we see it's running the PowerShell. It gets its configuration, and everything works as it should. So without me touching anything. The last thing I want to show here is a change log. This is not your standard change log. This is actually a change log for, um, for, the, for the stuff that I have with me here. So I started with a little Arduino, as I talked about, uh, some relays, and then some, some wires. And then it turned out in, turned into this, right? Where we have Arduino, wires, the valve I talked about, moisture sensors, which goes into a glass of water, so I could actually measure the uh, moisture, quickest way to measure moisture, um, and the sensor here, right? This is about two years ago, because I didn't spend so much time on it. Just regularly, I just 
did a little work on it. So I put my valves on a cigar box <laughs> and I made another Arduino with some stuff. And then this is the new version which you see here, which is running the Raspberry Pi. You have the, we have the um, relays. We have a power supply here that is waterproof. Doesn't really matter because the other stuff is not. Um, <laughs> but the box is so. But not right when it's open, of course. Uh, <laughs> and I put it on this beautiful piece of wood, which is they love in the customs when you go through that. Um, and here it looks. This is how it looks when I travel, right? So it looks a bit, bit dodgy, but it it works. This is how it's been running the whole year in the actual greenhouse. Um, with the wires out there, so when I was watering manually with a hose, I would watch out not to hit that thing. And a little wireless antenna here to um, extend the range. Yep. And then we have greenhouse, uh, tomatoes, sorry, and a greenhouse that works unless you uh, break your automation of some sort. But that has only been my fault, not the automation's fault. And if you have any questions, always contact me. My Twitter tag is Jacob G. Svensson, and that's the same thing on GitHub. Um, and then we have our Team CT Global on, on Twitter. And of course, you can also catch me anywhere else where you see me. So thank you for coming, and uh, that's it for today. <laughs>